This is Twit. Meltdown Inspector, they're so last week. As it turns out, EMC and VMware want to get into the security oops action as well. Now, while everyone was screaming about Meltdown Inspector, another urgent security fix was already in progress for many corporate data centers and cloud providers who use products from Dell's EMC and VMware units. A trio of critical, newly reported vulnerabilities in EMC and VMware backup and recovery tools, that's EMC Avamar, EMC Networker, EMC Integrated Data Protection Appliance, and vSphere Data Protection, could allow an attacker to gain root access to the systems or to specific files or inject malicious files into the server's file system. These problems can only be fixed with upgrades. The first of the vulnerabilities designated in MITRE's Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, that's the CVE list as CVE-2017-15548, allows an attacker to gain root access to the servers. This would potentially give someone direct access to backups on the server, allowing them to retrieve images of virtual machines, backed up databases, and other data stored within the affected systems. The second uh, vulnerability, CVE-2017-15549, makes it possible for an attacker to potentially upload malicious files into any location of the server file system without authentication. The third, that's CVE-2017-15550, is a privilege escalation bug that could allow someone with low-level authenticated access to access files within the server. The attacker could do this by using a web request crafted to take advantage of path traversal. That's moving up and down within the directory structure of the file system used by the application. These attacks all require access to the network that the servers run on, so it may not be possible in most cases to execute the attacks from the Internet, at least if the backup systems are running in a network partition from the Internet. But in these vulnerabilities, you could create opportunities for attackers who have already managed to get a foothold in data centers via other exploits to take further advantage. And unfortunately, as security researcher Davi Ottenheimer pointed out, there are hundreds of these systems exposed to the Internet, including more than 100 of them in Ukraine, China, and Russia. Now, I want to bring in my co-host on this. Chibert, the first thing we need to, to realize is that with these vulnerabilities, no passwords are required to access the backup data. Now, I have to ask, in your experience, are most people doing a good job of password protecting backup data? Or is that in itself sort of a processed level vulnerability that exists in a lot of places? I've seen way too many people not password protect um, backup data sets only because they're paranoid. You know, we've seen a lot of cases where, you know, tapes or whatever backup medium you use had a slight glitch. And with encrypted data or password protected data, sometimes you can't do a restore. Well, all too many people say, no, I don't want to take that chance. I'll just rely on physical security. Um, so that's all nice. Now, I will need to point out, this requires that you be on the local network of the files of the servers. So if you are, sadly, making that management network available to the world, uh, don't. Also, there's a lot of people freaking, about, freaking out about Meltdown Inspector. Both require physical access so to the other people you know in the mainstream media chill guys come on this is not the end of the world you have time it requires physical access or it requires access to the network just patch again i think this is more a case of it's got a cool name and it was and it rolls off the tongue and mainstream media is saying Hey, if it bleeds, it leads, right? Absolutely. And uh, let's never underestimate the importance of a really scary name when it comes to giving a vulnerability a lot of publicity.
Uh, there, there's one other thing we want to make sure that we talk about, and, and Lou, I, wa I want to talk about this with you, because these systems use Apache Tomcat, and there are reports that these systems th that were developed may not have kept up with all the Tomcat vulnerability patches and updates. That could lead to vulnerabilities in the fully developed systems. Now, you work managing developers. When you're looking at systems that use a lot of other components, components that were developed by other people, what kind of practices are in place? I mean, is it a best practice to fully vet and patch all of the components that you're using? Or do you tend to rely on the reputation of the people developing those other components and uh, use that as a way to save time in your development process? Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, I, you know, there, there's a there's a fine line between, hey, let's use some open source to to get ahead in the game, uh, to not have to write something and to share code, versus you know, you know, introducing something that might cause a vulnerability or or or, or not be just right for us. And there's a lot of times when we when you use open source libraries or you know or or application code from other teams, and you're you're going to have to do your own due diligence on that code uh, to ensure that you don't have these issues. You know, there's a lot of times we'll pull stuff in and we'll run it through the gamut of testing. You know, we have what we call horizontals where we say, hey, we do a set of security testing and performance testing and memory leak and resources and all this stuff to ensure that it's up to par with what we want. And then we also look at, you know, anytime a new library comes out, let's say you're using open source 1.1 one, one, and 1.2 one, comes out, we we always look at the code and what's different um, you know, what's changed. We go, we run through the gamut as well. We make a really conscious decision whether if it's, if it's a security patch they're fixing, whether we should take it or not and how fast we should get it out. So there's just a lot of things to think about. And when organizations are having to think about that stuff, they tend to, you know, forget some of the kind of the areas and the avenues there. So, and, and the perfect example is, you know, forgetting to patch things because they don't want to potentially cause compatibility issues with their devices or their servers or so on. So they tend to kind of only roll patches out every so often. We, we have lots of times problems here, even internally where, you know, you, you know, we have compatibility with some of the newer stuff, which is why we, we do automation on all of our software. We say, Hey, if, if we're using, let's say outlook on a machine and we want to make sure it works on the newest version of windows, we always have an automation machine running outlook on the newest version or the latest version of the previous versions to make sure that compatibility works. And a lot of these organizations have to start doing that to kind of cut their costs down when they get hacked because they're not up on the patches. So I think more organizations have to start doing that. 